Yeah, there's a lot of AOE guys that have been playing a lot of AOE. This is a one point five million dollar watch. Oh, the crash! This one it's alright. Cost fifty million, but your watch owning journey begins here. Really? With a thirty dollar flick flack. Flick flack is heavy as fuck though. Playful watches built to teach kids how to tell time. <laughs> The flick I mean, these do go hard quality. though. With great durability and elegant designs, it's the perfect start to your watch. Yeah, I've journey. been up with a crash But as you get older, you want a watch that's cooler. So for $40, you buy a Casio. We're talking about a brand that sets the standard for a watch at an affordable those. tier. Is there honestly one that does it any better than... Casio, in 1957, made the first compact electronic calculator. 23 years later, they made one for your wrist. The Japanese company has a wide range of quality, affordable watches with timeless designs. The legendary Casio F91... Dude, no, Jojo, I... I wish they kind of even went hard on that. I feel like there's a lot of companies that make cool shit that kind of, oh, they could be a watch with, and they invest into that brand on like a wearable. And over time, it appreciates like crazy. It's like it's like an investment of its own, you know? was worn throughout like, history by highly influential figures cool, like Osama yeah. Bin Laden and Osama Bin Laden's bombs. Your Casio is great and you love wearing it. But as you get older, you start to want something classier. The Timex Weekender, a brand with American roots, Timex had a mission to make affordable watches with great quality and durability. Notice how it captures the elegance of the most expensive watches. When you think of Timex, you think of the Weekender aesthetic. I love the simple design of these pieces. I saw the the glow is a fun, like, just kind of treat with this. Your Timex serves oh. you well. Maybe you should buy another traditional watch. Or maybe you shouldn't. This is all slightly absurd. You don't need a watch nowadays. True. Because by this point in your journey, you're watch. working towards becoming a young professional. You can't wear an antiquated trinket. You need something practical and productive. So for $250, you buy an Apple Watch SE. The Apple Watch released in 2015, and four years later, it outsold every Swiss watchmaker combined. The Swiss watch industry got thrown out the window faster than an Apple sweatshop worker. Your Apple Watch makes you wake up with its vibrating alarm feature. It makes you go outside with its step counter. It makes you go to bed with its sleep tracking. Forget intrinsic motivation and the willpower of the human spirit. All you ever needed were three colorful circles. But there's a problem with your Apple Watch. Well, now we're both. That no amount of convenience, health tracking, or performance metrics can fix. Your Apple Watch has no soul. Compared to the history, the craftsmanship, and the magic of traditional watches, your Apple Watch is just a sterile slab of tech. When you walk in a room with that on your wrist, you're telling oh, everybody yeah, we, I'm 20%. Me, me and Jesse met this guy. And off retail. That's, I would be caught common. dead with that on my wrist. This, this is all slightly absurd. You don't need a watch nowadays. But it's just about doing what is exceptional. It's about doing what is, I think, beautiful. Oh, and come something on. something that can really tell a story in itself. And then one day, you throw your Apple Watch out the window, and you buy a Seiko. Okay, okay, okay. I do like myself a good, nice watch, but dude... So when these guys go over the top and they, they say some shit that's like artistic, okay, chill out, bro. Presage. Seiko okay, is a yeah, brand that relax. offers some of the best so value for money in the entire watch industry. During World War II, Seiko produced military watches for Japanese troops. In 1969, Seiko dropped an atomic bomb on the watch industry when they introduced the quartz movement, which used a battery and a quartz uh, crystal to power a watch. These battery-powered watches were more accurate, affordable, and reliable than traditional mechanical watches. The Presage is Seiko's dress watch line, known for their salacious styles. It's a great watch, but it's just a Seiko. Inspiration comes at odd times. In 1917, the founder of Cartier oh, was yeah, looking at newspaper photographs of World War I tanks I going into battle. Autumn. And in an act of utter capitalism, he thought to himself, we can make a watch out of this. The Cartier tank has a rectangular design inspired by the Renault FT-17. The iconic Sega. watch has transcended the test of time and the boundaries of gender, being worn by everyone from Princess Diana to Muhammad Ali. Its understated elegance makes it a necessary addition to your watch collection. I really hate it, but Chad, there's something about traditional um, bullshit Roman uh, uh, numbers on the Cartiers. I think it's complete fucking dog shit. I just don't like it. In 1965, NASA needed an official wristwatch for the Apollo space program. Four watch brands answered the call, and they faced off in the NASA watch trials. One brand, Hamilton, sent in a pocket watch. The three remaining watches were put through rigorous torture tests until the Omega Speedmaster reigned victorious. Four years later, the Speedmaster solidified itself in watchmaking history as the first watch on the moon. One small step for man, one giant leap for the Omega marketing team. 
57 quintillion Omega Speedmaster models have since been released, all with different styles and complications. Like this one here that shows you the phases of the moon. Take this. That's an Omega. Yeah, but and no, that no, has no. a moon phase. Do you see the, the moon in the bottom of it? You see the moon on the bottom of it? It's a real high resolution photograph of the moon. Do you see the li you, little Jeff. moon? When it comes full moon, you'll get Almost a, a real sense of the moon. It's a beautiful high resolution image. Yeah. There's one watch brand that everyone knows. If you asked 99 of 100 men on the street to name a luxury watch, we all know what they're going to say. It's just very human. To like a Rolex. For ten thousand dollars, you buy a well, Rolex that's Submariner. They're, they're not, Rolex I, watches I were initially built to be tools. When the Submariner released in 1954, it cost 150 bucks. But Rolex is superior yeah, marketing because, pop. Because they've earned that spot as that brand. They don't have to expend or go crazy. They, it's in cemented. They don't, to, they don't have to do much of anything and they hold that spot. That's just what who they are. That's through good marketing. Culture but significance entered their brand. The brand has also stalled out though into the realm of oh, luxury. I have that. What was once a symbol of ruggedness and adventure became one of materialistic success. It used to be that you were the man, so you bought a Rolex. But nowadays, you buy a Rolex in hopes of becoming the man. In 1971, yeah, no, AP, on the verge of bankruptcy, called upon legendary designer Gerald Genta to oh, make yeah. an unprecedented steel sports watch. The deadline was one single day. At 11.59 p.m., Genta submitted his assignment, unaware that it would soon become the most influential watch design of all time. With its octagonal bezel, exposed screws, and seamless integrated bracelet, the AP Royal Oak is iconic and ubiquitous. Real shit. Hey, where am I in there? Come on, man. I fell off so hard. I want something that's gonna make me happy. Is that is that a baguette you show me? Yeah. Oh, Jacob. Yes. The Jacob & Co. Bugatti Chiron Tourbillon captures the spirit of a hypercar. Its outside shows shit. the flowing lines and curves of a Bugatti. Its inside, a Bugatti 16-cylinder engine wind-up toy. Watch my engine start. That is super cool. And it's Bugatti. By this point in your watch-owning journey, you've obtained a level of wealth that is extravagant, abrasive, and dangerous. So I used to wear my Rolex Daytona a lot, but I had an experience recently. I thought I was going to get attacked over my Daytona. With six figures on your wrist, you need to be cautious. Maybe you live in London, where you're at risk of getting run up on by machete-wielding blokes. Don't f***ing wear that in London. Do not wear that in London. What are they going to do, f***ing machete me? Yeah, literally. Run away, bro. Maybe you live in New York City, where high crime rates and sketchy subways have you watching your back at all times. You might even live in a third world country. No matter the location, you realize that your watches have gone from a simple accessory to an asset, a store of material value. The Langa Turbograph is a token But a lot of those are like, they don't look expensive. Five complications, complications 1,101 parts, and polishing instructions written by the Half-Blood Prince. It's a beautiful piece. Look at this tourbillon, a mechanism originally built to prevent the effects of gravity on pocket watches. Its hypnotic beauty might distract you from the fact that in modern- Chat, in all the watches chat, there's always a, a per- this- Yes, I, I never googled that though. It's always purple, always. Like the purple screws, what are those and what material is that? Always, always, always purple. What is it? Dude, it's an agile ruby, but, but why a ruby though? Because it's every watch has them, all of them. You from the fact Always that purple. in modern wristwatches, it's useless. The fusée and chain mechanism in the watch is also completely obsolete. The expert finishing on the, the movement's inner yeah, parts, you never actually see it. Maybe this is all slightly absurd, but maybe that's the point. Richard Mill RM69 sex watch, $696,000. What celebrity do you think owns this watch? I hate that one. Bro, bro, Chef Brunel in chat literally told me to buy this last time. He was adamant about it. So that I hate that Drake's shit. weapon of choice, so the RM69, has three six-sided rollers which produce randomized erotic messages. For example, let me keyword your wet ass p word. I want to S word your female genitalia. Let me tell you one thing. When I put a wrist on me on my wrist, mm. it's just bizarre. I watch. Half a million dollars. Yo, thanks, bro. <laughs> All of a sudden I walk different. I talk different. Wait, which one is that? Is that the one that does not look expensive? Yeah, 6702, is that the one with the lines on it? It is, I had it right. 
the fuck it's the one with the fucking lines on it like that and it's it's not worth it bro this guy's just trolling it's not yeah it's 20k Million dollars. Yo, thanks, bro. <laughs> you said, you said half a mil. You said half a mil, you know? Do people treat you different? Yes. Yeah. Remember that Cartier tank you bought for five grand? They squished it. half a mil? That's not half a mil. 1.5 million. Inspiration comes at odd times. In 1967, a man wearing a Cartier watch got in a car accident. The force of the impact yeah, of the heat of the crash we're, we're, we're melted the oval-shaped case of the man's watch. Massive. And when Cartier himself saw the brutally damaged object, he only thought one thing. We can make a watch out of this. That is the backstory of the Cartier crash, according to the Cartier marketing department. Hmm? I don't get it. The actual backstory of the watch is much simpler. Rich people got bored. Thus spawned the Cartier crash, a perfectly the really hard to get. watch. Forget about the price, it's just hard to find calculated. one. Of when it was released, no one liked it. Then Kanye wore it, and everyone liked it. A lot. Kanye said, only millionaires wear chains. They said, what? He said, I'm a billionaire. Billionaires don't wear their money on their body. The Jacob and Cole billionaire is the ultimate display of opulence. Thanos scoured the universe that for infinity stones. Jacob and Cole scoured the earth for perfect diamonds to assemble this gauntlet. With the Jacob and Cole billionaire, you could simply snap your fingers and you'd be getting robbed at gunpoint. Yeah, like, that shit is not team. worth that amount. Watch. It took us almost four years to find the stones. I've never put anything like this on my Dude, These are just pure cap. It's, um, dude, these people are fucking, they're walking cap. Cappuccino. Kepa Ross, Kepa Klaus, 21 Kepa billionaire everything. watches have been made, with one model being owned by world famous billionaire Floyd Mayweather. I was the first one wearing uh, the Patek Philippe. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I was the was first he though? One. No shots. The fuck? In 1868, Patek Philippe made the first Swiss wristwatch. This was a time when pocket watches dominated the industry. Wristwatches were seen as feminine, not to be taken seriously by men. In 1914, the Albuquerque Journal said, The fellow who wears a wristwatch is frequently suspected of having lace on his lingerie and of braiding his hair at night. But after a few years of war and marketing, the wristwatch transformed from a small piece of woman's jewelry to a masculine tool and a unit of legacy. Men went from calling wristwatches gay to waxing their forearms so they don't tarnish their wristwatch. Perceptions and interests are in perpetual motion. Why, really? A small trinket that tells the time can be a toy, a tool, a status symbol, and even a work of art. Each one of these stones has a story. Carbon, exposed to extreme heat and pressure in the Earth's mantle, transforms into diamond before being pushed to the Earth's surface through volcanic eruption. Nope. These magical eh, gems made it a fucking lab. Main eruption sites until they inevitably get dug up by little African boys. You may get so lost in the sparkle of your 110 karat graph hallucination that you don't even notice the time passing by on its minuscule dial. And beneath that dial is the same type of watch movement that was in your flick flack. The world's most expensive watch has an economical, battery powered- See again, dude, the little purple thing. Am I crazy? Look, the little pink washer, bruh. Battery I'm powered quartz movement. Well, they have to. What advice would you give to young guys or young girls just getting into watches now? Just You've getting into watches. Yeah. Um, it's all about the progression. Yeah. Don't jump out the window. Right. Off the back. Yeah, don't buy them. No shit. Yeah, don't buy that shit. What the fuck?